Godzilla vs. Megagirus. Now, Godzilla vs. Megagirus is a movie from 2000. It was made in Japan, and it follows after Godzilla 2000. It is not a sequel to that movie in any way, uh, although the Godzilla suit kind of looks the same, with a little bit of differences. Uh, for one thing, Godzilla has like purple coloring in his spines, uh, which I think looks really cool. The suit looks really mean, really menacing, really like bestial, I guess is the word. Uh, this is a badass looking Godzilla. As I said though, this is not a sequel to Godzilla 2000. This one is actually follows the very first Godzilla movie, but that's the only Godzilla movie that is, you know, supposed to have ever happened in the continuity and the timeline of this movie. Uh, it's kind of a an alternate history of Godzilla and Japan. For instance, yes, Godzilla did attack Tokyo in 1954, and this movie actually goes out of its way to recreate some of the original iconic scenes of Godzilla in that original appearance. So we get to see the new suit in place of the old original Godzilla suit, and I think that's kind of cool how they did it. And uh, you know, they show Godzilla like biting the train in half and you know, stomping the city and like basically just laying waste to Tokyo. And it's really cool how they did it as an homage to that original movie. And in this opening like montage scene, uh, Godzilla does return to Japan in the 60s and he starts feeding on the radiation from Japan's many nuclear power plants. So, hmm, some drastic changes have to be made in Japan. Since Godzilla just keeps coming and attacking all their reactors, they're going to have to switch to an alternate fuel source. Yeah, of course, there's wind and solar and hydroelectricity, and I guess all those things are implemented. But they also come up with what's called plasma energy. And they're able to meet all of Japan's energy needs using this new technology, which is, of course, fictional and created for the film. Somewhere down the line in the 90s, turns out that Godzilla likes plasma energy to eat just as much as he likes radioactivity. So, okay, <sighs> What was the point of that then? As I said, the Godzilla suit is really cool looking, it's really menacing. This is probably one of my favorite Godzilla appearances, uh, you know, like physical appearances. I mean, in terms of what he looks like. However, there is some CGI scenes of Godzilla swimming that don't look so hot, but eh, whatever. Anyway, Godzilla's rampaging through the streets, and there's like a squad of uh, bazooka soldiers, bazooka squad. And they're going up against Godzilla, and they're firing, you know, their their rockets at him and stuff. And uh, they get chased by Godzilla a little bit down the alleyways and things. And it's uh, really cool miniature effects and really cool suitmation effects. So our hero sees basically her entire squad, including her commanding officer, get wiped up by Godzilla in the very beginning of this movie. Then you get your titles. And then we get into the movie plot itself. I'll give you the gist of it. They're trying to get rid of Godzilla. They're always trying to get rid of Godzilla. But this time they got a really good plan. They create what's called the Dimension Tide. Which is a weapon fired from a satellite orbiting the Earth. Uh, direct it, they're going to direct it at Godzilla. And they're going to launch a miniaturized black hole. Wiping Godzilla out of existence. They have to get a team together to put this device together and to get it in place and to test it and all this stuff. And when they test it, they accidentally create a wormhole just for a few seconds, but something comes out of that wormhole. Just a, well, a fairly large dragonfly, like a prehistoric, like a, a mega nulon is what it's called. And it flies through the portal, it lays an egg and then dies. The scientists don't really know about this happening. They didn't really witness this thing coming out of the portal or they're they can't find it if they did but the egg is found by a little kid uh, who uh, basically stuffs it in his backpack and takes it home and he's like wow cool look at this thing it's like a big giant looks like a giant like bath bead or something like that and it's all squishy and goopy and, and the kid brings it home and he puts it in his room and hides it under his bed 
he finds out later that the military, or rather the G Grasper anti Godzilla force, is looking for witnesses and looking for anybody that has any information about when they did their test. So the kid gets freaked out and he's worried he's going to get in trouble. So he takes the egg and he like throws it in the sewer. He was originally just going to throw it in the garbage, but you know, some lady said, don't put it in the garbage. So he throws it down the sewer and the thing eventually hatches and there's a whole bunch of Mega Nulon are hatched and they kind of go out and they menace the city. Uh, there's some actual like horror parts in here where you see people getting attacked by the, uh, the Mega Nulon and they're pretty creepy or there's at least one scene, you know, like there's this young teenage hip couple and the one person goes into the store and the other one's waiting out in the alley and gets attacked by a Mega Nulon. Uh, basically gets like his brain sucked out or something like that and it's actually kind of gory and kind of funny looking I thought Seemed a little out of place, but it was a kind of a cool little addition to this movie. Yeah, there's some other Unconventional things happen in this movie too. Like for example our female protagonist you see her actually Climb onto Godzilla's back and onto one of his spines and actually rides on the back of Godzilla which is really cool, and I'd never seen that before. You never really get that many close-up, like, here's how big Godzilla really is in comparison to these humans. I mean, it's always, like, little faraway shots or sometimes, like, rear projection or miniatures. Here, yeah, I think it's done digitally, but um, it looks really cool. And then later on in the movie, once they get the Dimension Tide device working, they try to lure Godzilla to this island, to this... Uh, in an uninhabited island where they want to basically shoot the gun at him so that like you know nothing else is really going to be harmed but before they can actually shoot the black hole gun at Godzilla Godzilla gets swarmed by all these mega nulons who have hatched from these from the egg from earlier and there's just like thousands of them and they swarm all over Godzilla and you know each one of them is like I don't know it's got like a six foot wingspan or something like that and it just looks really neat. It's like Godzilla getting swarmed by all these giant dragonflies, really, is what they what they look like. And uh, they're, like, stinging him. But what they're doing is they're also, like, feeding off of his energy. And they're stealing all this energy from him. Uh, which I believe is supposed to be plasma energy that he, like, absorbed from the plasma reactors earlier in the film. Godzilla manages to roast a bunch of them. But, you know, enough of them get away that they're able to fly back to their lair and feed this plasma energy to their queen, Megagiris. But we don't get to see that till later. First they gotta fire the Dimension Tide device. They gotta fire that black hole at Godzilla. And they fire it, and then the smoke clears and the, all the dust clears, and we can't see Godzilla, it must have worked. Oh my god, we did it, we killed Godzilla, yay, and everybody celebrates, and then Godzilla just kind of rises up from under a bunch of dirt, and then he walks back into the ocean. Didn't work at all. And Megagiris emerges, and it's a giant, super ugly looking, well, Meganulon is what it's supposed to be, but it, it's like a big dragonfly looking monster, but it's got like the, uh, the, the head and mouth kind of look almost like Godzilla. In a way, I guess, because it like absorbed a bunch of his like G cells as well, and it was mutated by Godzilla. Anyway, it's a pretty cool monster. It's a pretty unique monster, and Megagirus is one of a handful of actually female kaiju in the Godzilla movies. One of which, you know, the main one being Mothra. Uh, Biolante, I think, is another one. So this would be maybe the third one. It's pretty badass. Can fly like super fast. Or like zips around really quickly, creates like sonic waves and sonic booms, has like a deadly stinger on its tail, uh, stabs Godzilla with it right in the crotch at one point. So Megagirus gets one scene where it emerges from the water and it uh, you know does a little bit of attacking, uh, and this um, happens at night. And it's really unfortunate they decided to do this scene at night because you can clearly see the wires that are holding the puppet up, uh, and that looks kind of shitty. But that's one of the few really main complaints that I have about this movie. Because otherwise I think this movie is fun and entertaining. And it's just all around goofy and good. And the next scene is like, you know, your big giant monster finale. It's Godzilla versus Megagirus. 
and it's a good long battle there's some uh, cool things that happen in it uh, some you know Godzilla kind of getting his ass kicked for a while like he always does you know by these other monsters and then he turns it around in the end and of course wipes the floor with this monster and the, probably the funniest scene in the whole movie is just takes a second but it's and it's just one shot but it's just so ridiculous that uh, we see Godzilla running towards Megaguirus where she's hovering you see him leap you just see his feet like leave the ground and the very next shot is like Godzilla filmed from below super high in the air falling towards the camera and it's like this just like super mega high jump body slam thing that he does and it the rest of the movie while amusing uh, that was the one spot where I just like laughed my ass off yeah but like I said it's a good long battle it's um uh, with a really cool looking Godzilla and a cool looking enemy monster. It doesn't focus too much on the human drama and the human drama is not super interesting or exciting but the characters are good. Um, you don't get too much of that kid though. Like the kid that started all this stuff or you know well I guess it's not really his fault that an alien came through a wormhole but it is kind of irresponsible to just take this like egg and throw it in the garbage. Yeah, but uh, surprisingly, this kid doesn't come back and have like a any kind of a role in the movie. Really, uh, he's he doesn't run around in short pants and spout really annoying lines of dialogue like the kids in most Godzilla movies. He's just a kid. There's a little bit less of a budget on this one than you know some previous Godzilla movies, but I think they did pretty well with what they had here. I think they it's not a super original story, but it's serves it well, you know. It's just a lot of fun. I would say, like, this is probably in my top 10 of my Godzilla movies that I like. Uh, maybe around 9 or 10, but it's in there because it's not too serious. It's not too goofy. Acting's all fine. The story's all fine. It doesn't take a really long time to get to the point like a lot of others do. And so I'm going to go ahead and give Godzilla vs. Megaguirus a B+. Anyway, I hope you enjoy these reviews. I'm going to try and get to some more Godzilla real soon. Uh, I've just got a backlog of a bunch of weird science fiction movies and dumb comedies that I have to watch and review. But I will definitely make an effort for Godzilla. So anyway, have a good one out there, everybody.